This is a short video for Phuket Word, but also for any flat earther who's struggling with how perspective actually works in reality and how it would have to work on a flat earth and how it does in fact work on the globe. I'm going to play the first 40 seconds or so of Phuket Word's video, Flat Earth Sunsets with Perspective, Parallel Lines Never Meet. Hello, Flat Earth researchers, debaters, and debunkers. It is admittedly quite a challenge to detach from the perception that we see sunsets because we're on a spinning spherical Earth, making the sun go below the surface. So uh, let's just have a look at uh, how we can perceive a sunset on the Flat Earth. Call this a model, if you like, but this model has to include perspective. So I've tried to illustrate the perspective that this person would see from a side on external frame of reference. Again, it's important to remember that the globe model that we're given is always an external frame of reference of someone on a circle or a sphere based on the observations we make in the sky. So instead of... So Phuket says that he's trying to show perspective using an orthogonal side on external view. Um, and he does that by making the sun actually get lower and lower and making the cloud actually get lower and lower. Um, you should keep in mind that he's not doing scale here very well. Um, the distance between the cloud and the sun uh, is going to be proportional um, in reality. And in his model, it is not at all proportional. Um, the sun is much closer to the cloud here proportionally than it is here. You'll also notice that the cloud doesn't seem really to be changing in size properly as it gets further and further away. And you'll notice that the size of the sun in his, uh, in his diagram here also doesn't really appear to change properly given the distance. Um, so he's trying to squeeze perspective into an orthogonal view, and the way he does that is by actually lowering things. How he should really do that is simply by moving the object further away from the observer and showing what the angular size of the object is. We have an observer here. His eyes are six feet above the ground, and he's looking at a house. This house is in total 20 feet tall. And this house is 50 feet away from him. This 20 foot tall house, when it's 50 feet away from him, has an angular size of 19.317 degrees. I'm now going to move this to 100 feet away from him. At 100 feet away, the house is now 10.489 degrees in angular size. I've increased its distance by twice, and its angular size has decreased by just about twice. Let's continue this. Let's move it another 100 feet away, thus doubling its distance again. I've doubled its distance from him, and its angular size has once again decreased by about half. Let's do this one more time. Now you'll notice I'm zooming out so the house looks smaller, but the house isn't actually getting smaller. Once again, our observer, his eyes are six feet above the ground. The house is 20 feet tall and 400 feet away, and it has an angular size of 2.801 degrees. So you can see that the house never actually changes in size, but its apparent size, its angular size, changes. This is an orthogonal view that is allowing you to see the effect of distance on perspective. Okay, so you can see by means of the angular size how perspective works. The further something gets away from you, it doesn't actually change size, but its angular size, the amount of space it takes up in your field of view, changes. And there's a simple mathematical formula to determine that, and you can Google it yourself. It's really not all that difficult. Now I'd like to change and let's imagine that instead of having feet as our scale, we have miles as our scale. So our observer's eye is now going to be all the way down here. And instead of looking at a house, we're going to be looking at the sun. So our observer's eyes are down there, zero miles above the surface of the Earth. And the sun is approximately 3,000 miles above the Earth. Now, 
not all flat earthers will agree the sun is 3,000 miles above the earth. That was the figure, approximate figure, that Samuel Robotham came up with. And this sun has a radius of 14 miles, so it has a diameter of 28 miles. And the sun, if it were 28 miles in diameter and 3,000 miles above the surface of the earth, would have an angular size of 0.522 degrees, which is a generally acceptable value for the angular size of the sun. So we're going to zoom out now so we can see both our observer and the sun at the same time. Okay. So let me hide those two points. Now let me do my demonstration. We're going to move the sun a distance away. Uh, it's currently a little over 600 miles uh, in front of our observer and 3,000 miles up. Um, if I move it to around 1,200 miles away uh, on, on land and still 3,000 miles up, we see that its angular size has decreased. Um, if I continue to move it further and further away from our observer, its angular size will continue to decrease. The other thing we'll notice is that the angle that we have to look at to see the sun is getting shallower and shallower. We can measure that angle as well. We're going to measure that angle like this. Okay. So that angle, 33.223 degrees, is the current angle that one has to look above the horizon to see the sun if it were 4,600 miles in front of you and 3,000 miles up. But the sun would also be nearly half as big on the flat earth. So we see as it gets closer and closer to you, the angle at which you view it increases and the angular size of the sun increases. And as it gets further and further away from you, the angle at which you view it decreases and its angular size decreases. Now, if I continued to extend the sun further and further away, we would see that you have to look lower and lower above the horizon to see the sun. But I've now made the sun 18,000 miles away from our observer, and it's still over 9 degrees above the horizon. I move it to 27,000 miles away from the observer, and it's still 6 degrees above the horizon. Okay, So this is one of the problems that the flat Earth has. Um, the sun, if it's circling above the Earth, it should be getting smaller and smaller. That's its angular size should be decreasing. And the other problem is it should never actually reach the horizon. The sun on a flat earth doesn't get far enough away from the observer to reach the horizon. And this orthogonal view, which does accurately incorporate perspective, demonstrates that. So how could we fix this problem? Well, we could say that maybe the sun doesn't travel in a a parallel line above the surface of the Earth, maybe the sun travels in a slanted line. You could do that, but it still wouldn't make the angular size of the sun constant. And we know that the angular size of the sun is constant. And it also runs into the sticky problem of actually making the sun intersect the Earth. And we know that neither of these things is the case. The sun does not change in angular size, and the sun does not actually come in contact with the Earth. So that is an orthogonal view that represents perspective properly, and it is a demonstration of why the flat Earth mechanics of a sun circling above the Earth, several thousand miles above the Earth, uh, does not work in reality. It does not match what we observe in reality. Sorry, Phuket word.